Yo, what is going on, everybody? What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing out there today, man? So today we're going to be checking out some Roy Orbison. Okay, only the lonely know the way I feel. The last video I did from Roy, uh, outside of the Traveling Wilburys, which I have a few reactions to them on the channel as well, if you're interested, uh, the one I've done solo with Roy last was Crying. Okay, so today we're going to be checking out only the lonely. We have the studio version here, I believe. So let's go ahead and jump into this one, see what we're getting into, man. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Here we go. Dum, 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 you a different time. Only the lonely. Only the lonely. I gotta hear that part again guys this was really short i hope y'all don't mind me cutting back but i'm just trying to think about the time that this song came out how much was hitting like competing with the way that this was structured right here man that was great that was great i want to catch that part where it breaks a few times and then drops back in that part was really nice Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. only the lonely I know that people said that Elvis absolutely loved Roy. I think even said that Roy was a better singer than him. Um, but I don't know. I could say I don't I don't know what specific times they came out. But if Roy was first, I mean, maybe Elvis drew some inspiration from Roy's style of singing because I could they're very different. But you can catch similarities in tone, like a, a kind of their little tonal uh, switches and vo vocals, the way they work them. Um, so I could, if Elvis was inspired or, or loved him and, and thought he was the greatest singer, then maybe he was inspired and, and used a little bit of that technique. I don't know. I'm not very, I'm not, uh, musically, I'm, I'm musically challenged. I should say, uh, I don't know the best way to, to word these things and the terminology used, but I'm just saying I could catch some similarity in there. All right. So for the song, only the lonely, we got Roy Orbison 
right here, man. Released in 1960, all right? This is considered rock, pop, rock, and roll, okay? The songwriters are Roy Orbison and Joel Melson on this one, man. Orbison's recording of the song produced by Fred Foster and Monument Records was the first major hit for the singer. It was described by the New York Times as expressing a clenched, driven urgency, all right? Looks like in 1999, the recording of this song was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame, all right? Development after several years without much success in the music business and sharing a tiny apartment apartment with his wife and new baby, Roy Orbison had taken to sitting in his car to write songs when in 1958, his acquaintance Joe Melson tapped on the car window and suggested they collaborate with Chet. Uh, Chet Atkins producing, they recorded several songs for the RCA Nashville, only two of which were deemed worthy of relief. Uh, release. Wesley Rose brought Orbison to the attention of producer Fred Foster at Monument Records. There, Orbison would become one of the first recording artists to popularize the Nashville sound. Down here it says, in early 1960, uh, or Orbison and Joe Melson wrote one more song, Only the Lonely which they tried to sell to Elvis Presley and the Everly Brothers, who turned it down. The song was subtitled, Know the Way I Feel, to avoid confusion with another song called Only the Lonely, uh, which Sammy Kahn and Jimmy Van Hoosen had written for Frank Sinatra in 1958. Instead, they recorded Only the Lonely themselves at the RCA's Nashville studio using the string section and doo-wop backing singers that had given Uptown such an impressive sound. But this time, sound engineer Bill Porter tried a completely new strategy, building the mix from top down rather than from the bottom up, beginning with the closed mic backing vocals in the foreground and ending with the rhythm section soft in the background. This combination was to become Orbison's trademark sound. All right, The recording also features a falsetto note hit by Orbison that showcases surprisingly powerful voice. Love that section right there. According to biographer uh, Alan Clayson, it came not from his throat, but deep within. The song differed from the typical verse, chorus, form, structure of popular music of the time, building a falling to a climax with an emotional expression, then rare for masculine performance. All right, the single shot to number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and hit number one in the UK, Ireland, and Australia. According to Orbison, he and Melson now begin constructing songs with Orbison's voice in mind, specifically to showcase its range and power. He told Rolling Stones in 1988, I like the sound of my voice. I liked making it sing, making it, making the voice ring, and I just kept doing it. And I think that somewhere between the time of Ubi Doobie and Only the Lonely, it kind of turned into a good voice. Instantly, Orbison was in high demand. He appeared on the American Bandstand and toured the U.S. for three months nonstop with Patsy Cline. When Patsy heard Only the Lonely for the first time, the song he had turned down, he bought a box of the records to give out to his friends. Amazing, man. And he, that's always interesting to me that you're going to have stories like this where you, an artist tries to get a song to other people. The other people turn it down. Somebody either takes it or, in this case, Roy took it himself and said, hey, I, we wrote this song. We'll do this song then. And it becomes a hit that these other people. But maybe those other people uh, who were offered the song couldn't turn it into the hit that it became otherwise, right? Um, it obviously took a certain kind of magic to make that thing happen. And even if you have a, a super talented person, let's say Elvis or the Everly Brothers, that doesn't necessarily mean this song is going to sound as good if they had made it over Roy Orbison, right? This was probably the way it was always meant to sound. So there we go, man. Thank you guys for tuning in here. Let me know more that you guys want me to check out, whether it be Roy, Elvis, or El Everly Brothers. Man, I know I need to get back into the Everly Brothers. Uh, I think I only have one reaction. That's really sad right i need to get more into the everly brothers so let me know down in the comment sections what you guys want me to check out all right thank you guys for tuning in here today man if you enjoyed rocking with me please let me know by liking subscribing and checking out the descriptions down below i ask that you consider becoming a member here on my youtube or patreon for as little as three bucks man if i'm putting a smile on your face it's a great way to support me all right thank you guys so much and i'll see you on the next one peace